Good day, my name is Peter Lucas and I'll be the assessor for the following course. This course comes out of TAWS 402B Major Activity and it's part B. The course name is Develop Software Solutions for Microcontrollers and the unit of competence is UWE N double E H one one five A. The objective today is to see if the student is knowledgeable um, in the use of the equipment, and we're talking about the software um, application and the loading of MP Lab eight point one. And um, we basically have the following objectives as well. We want to make sure that he can write a program. He knows the syntax that's available in C programming. And he can um, basically identify and calculate resistor values as well. This is a typical circuit of a microcontroller. And let's say, for instance, this is, uh, belongs to the family of the big microcontrollers. And this is the one we used in class. Okay, so here we have a little push button. Open and close push button. Here we have a LDR. Here we have a resistor and an LED. Uh, we have two resistors, two little LEDs that's flashing there. Okay, so um, this program or unit of competence also consists of three elements. Element 1, element 2 and element 3. So let's start doing some assessment on element 1. What must you do before you start developing software. What is the type of activities that you need to do before you start developing software? One, you need to have a computer, for example. You need to have uh, the application software. You need to have integrated development and so on and so on. So you need to tell me um, what is the type of parts that you require to actually start doing your work. Question two. This refers to your syntax. Syntax is, for example, um, words like init and int and char and unsigned. Those are unsigned char uh, long short but those are all syntax. Okay, now I'm going to ask you a question. Give me what is the correct, what, is, what does it mean when I say int? What does it mean when I say init? What do I mean when I say char? What does unsigned mean? Explain these ones. One, two, three, four. So what I want you to do in your answer book is write down in it and then explain what does it mean. Then you go to the next one, int. What does int mean? And explain it. Char. What is what is the word char actually mean? Next one, how does a interrupt, in the software development we have a interrupt facility inside our microcontroller. So when we activate, let's say for instance we activate this little switch and we press the switch down and we inside here we have a program. So we've got a program inside here that says that there is an interrupt facility in the software. So when I press the little switch, 
So there's five volts over here, and that's zero. If I press that switch, what is going to happen to my program if I initialize an interrupt facility in my program? Now, microcontrollers, next question, microcontrollers can communicate with microcontrollers and also other discrete devices. Name two ways of how they can talk to each other. How can they communicate to each other? They talk certain languages and certain formats. So give me two examples of how microcontrollers can talk to other discrete devices. Inside our microcontroller, we have two little devices. We have a counter and we have a timer inside our microcontroller. What is the difference between the two? Please do explain in full what is the difference. What is the function of a timer and what is the function of a counter and what is the difference between the two? They do, two, they do similar work but the initialization is different. Here's a nice easy one for you guys. Um, what type of architecture is inside a PIC microcontroller? And I'll give you a hint. The two that is available is Harvard architecture or von Neumann architecture. So which one does it actually employ inside this microcontroller? So let's go on to writing some programs. I'm giving you a hint over here. How do you express a for loop? A loop is a system by which you can delay a certain part of the program. So how do you express it inside the for loop? Next question. What does this expression mean? RA4 equal RA4 little cap and 1. What does this actually mean? Remember this one here? It is not that one. It is a single equal sign or the double equal sign. So what does that mean? RA4 equals RA4 little cap 1. So if this is RA4, this I O pin over here, if that's RA4 and you have a little LED there, what does it actually mean? What is going to happen to that LED? Is it going to stay constant or is it going to toggle? Now to the next one, a little bit more serious, write a small program to flash an LED on and off. The one LED needs to stay off for 500 milliseconds and the other LED can also go 500 milliseconds. So let's say here we've got, we've got two LEDs over here. 
So that's uh, one there. That's LED one. That's LED two. So you've got two LEDs, you've got your current limiting resistors and what we want is to write a little program switching them on and off at 500 milliseconds. 500 milliseconds is half a second. So they're going to be on for 500 milliseconds, then it's going to go off. Once it goes off, the other one goes on. So write a little program for us so we can see how you employ your syntax and your programming skills. Next question on the element two. What is the two methods you can use to make a distinction in a C program? When you have a C pro when you have a C program and you want to make a distinction, a distinction is also so there's your program start, then you have, so that's your start, oh. let's just write this block properly, so there you start your program, you make your statement, and then you need to do something over here. <laughs> Here's a bit of a hint for you. You start the program up, you make a statement, and then what do you do? You either go this way or you go that way. Tell me two ways of how you can actually do this. Next question. Write a program to indicate with pressing a switch two states of output using the if and the else statement. So here we are again, we've got two LEDs. I've got a, a push button over here. Okay. So if the switch is open, one LED will be on. If the switch is closed, the other LED will be on. That first one will, will um, be off, this one will be on. As soon as the state of the, the switch is open or change, the state of these two LEDs will be changing continuously. So we have to make a if and else program to run this code. So here we have next question on calculation and we will look at this part here. If we have 5 volts over here and we have a LED over here, what is the value of the resistor? The typical current draw of this LED is 20 milliamps. The voltage coming out of the microcontroller is 5 volts. We want to know what is the current limit limiting resistance value. Now, this is element three. One question in element three is that we need to work out a timer function. And we want to use timer zero. Show me how you would, uh, one, two, three, four, plus minus four to five lines of how you would set up timer zero so that you can have a delay of 256 milliseconds. You start the program with void main. Nothing in void over there. 
open brackets, and you write your code over there. I want a delay of 256 milliseconds. And a last question in element 3. This is, this is the big question. Write a program. As soon as you press the little switch over here, remember earlier we talked about a counter and a timer. Once we press the switch, it activates the counter. And 20 milliseconds after the counter has activated, we want to run a timer that will be flashing these two LEDs. You have the freedom to call them any anyone. It could be um, uh, RA5, RA6, or RA1, doesn't matter which, what is the numbers or which ones you use, as long as you press the button over here, so you have one input, which is activating the counter, and then after the counter has been activated, 20 seconds, 20 milliseconds after the counter has been activated, the timer starts and it starts flip flopping these two little LEDs. This will be the end of your assessment, and I say thank you for listening to the assessment, and all the best for your um, the results. The pass mark for this assessment is 60%. The assessment needs to be in by two working days. Please email it to me as soon as possible so you can have the feedback and I can mark it. Thank you.